Hey there lads and ladies, it is Petrifying Pumpkins here and welcome to another episode of PSVR News. This time I've got two things to talk about. One thing very positive that I'm very excited about. The other thing, something that's kind of bringing up a lot of concern with me right now. Maybe I'm misinterpreting things. Maybe I'm reading the tea leaves incorrectly. Hopefully that's the way. But that's the other thing, something that's making me a little bit nervous about the future of PSVR. One on the PS5. So let's just jump right into it, starting with that bad, well, not all bad news, I should say. It's half good, half bad. So let's just start with No Man's Sky coming to PS5. So this was just announced an hour ago, we'll say. No Man's Sky, the next generation, that's the name of this update that's coming. So it's gonna bring, if you already own us on PS4 or Xbox One, you'll be able to play it day one when the new consoles launch. On those new consoles, no additional cost, free updates. It's gonna give you 4K 60 frames per second, haptic feedback on the new controller, super fast loading times, you know, new audio, the Tempest audio on the PS5, 3D audio. It's gonna be revamped, rehauled, just like thousands more objects on screen at any one time, and just a bunch of all kinds of like advantages that you can see in this video playing beside me here if you look at the top left corner it shows these different features and one of them when I saw it, it said PS viewer support and I was like yeah oh yeah PS viewer support is gonna get all this cool shit I was so happy so excited then I went to the PlayStation blog which gave more details about this and that's when my hopes were somewhat dashed let me just pull this up Jamie put it up so exhibit a no Man's Sky, the next generation. Sounds like a Star Trek subtitle, which is uh, very appropriate, I think. Anyway, we're reading through this announcement from Sean Murray himself on the PlayStation blog. They've teamed up with PlayStation to announce this. Of course, No Man's Sky and PlayStation have had like a tight marketing deal since it came out. So you scroll down to see all the new features. You know, you got the haptic controls, fuller worlds, you know, 32 players together. Uh, advanced audio and that 32 players by the way includes crossplay and playing with uh, previous generations too. 4k at 60 frames per second which is really impressive ultra visuals base buildings being expanded upon apparently you can make huge off-world colonies now warp speed load times crossplay we talked about that already upgrading from ps4 to ps5 is free and then we read this point here playstation vr so let's just read this but be you know mindful of the wording that they're using here no Man's Sky is fully playable in PS4 on PlayStation 5, and this is the big one, by virtue of its backwards compatibility functionality. That tells me that in order to play No Man's Sky in VR on a PS5, you can't do it natively on the PS5. You have to put it into its backward compatibility function or mode or whatever it is it goes into. And that tells me that there's a good chance we won't get any of these kind of cool advantages that are coming. You know, obviously we're not gonna get 4K on the PSVR anyway, because the, the uh, display is only 1080p, but we would have gotten better volumetric lighting and fuller worlds and seen more objects on screen and there would have been all these advantages. Now, the one thing we might still guess is the faster loading times because everything's running on the SSD now so regardless we might get faster loading but all the other stuff we might just not have we might just have the same as the PS4 version with a bit better load well probably a lot better loading speeds but not optimized for PS5 not fully taking advantage of PS5 and that is kind of a punch in the gut to me it's kind of painting this picture now of a PS5 where the only way to play VR on us is in backwards compatibility mode. And this is kind of corroborated by this other image that I'm gonna show you here. This came up a couple of weeks ago, I think, but I didn't really wanna talk about it too much because it was just one image by itself. Didn't necessarily mean anything. I was waiting for more stuff to come up to kind of back up this kind of conspiracy theory that I've been building up here. Uh, basically, let me just pop it up, Hitman. Exhibit B. Okay, so we know Hitman's coming to PS4, we know it's coming to PS5, both of them coming in January, but you'll see on the box arts that were officially revealed like a week or two ago, that only the PS4 box art makes any indication that the game is VR compatible. The PS5 is completely void of any graphic design or wording to indicate that, you know, this game supports PS4 on the PS5. So what's going on? You know, I think Personally, if I had to venture a guess, I would say this is a Sony policy, something that they're putting out. They're saying, okay, devs, you might want to take advantage of the PS5 to, you know, leverage the PS VR a bit better, but it might cause confusion. So, for example, if PlayStation VR support was under the PS5 box art as well, 
you might have PSVR owners seeing PSVR support, assuming it would work on their PS4. I know it's like a, a jump in logic and it assumes people are very, very stupid, but these things do happen and it can be a headache for these huge corporations and it can lead to accusations of false advertisement. This may be why they're only allowing virtual reality via backwards compatibility and it might explain why we have not heard anything about VR for games like Resident Evil 8 because maybe we all have to wait until PSVR 2 comes along whenever that could be could be next year could be the year after could be even the year after that maybe and then Sony will say okay we've got the new headsets now you can take advantage of the PS5 fully and really dazzle people with that problem with that is is you know how many people watching right now have pre-ordered a PS5 getting one day one or at least we're planning to just for taking advantage of better VR support. Personally, I want a PS5 anyway because I love fat games too, you know, Demon Souls, Spider-Man, stuff like that I'm really excited for. But there's definitely people out there who are not interested in that flat stuff and just want VR and this might be a bit of a kick to the balls or it might give them reason to cancel their pre-order now and just wait until PSVR 2 comes out. I mean, we'll just have to wait and see really. Uh, this is just my interpretation of how I'm seeing things right now could be completely misreading the tea leaves here. This is completely up for debate and I'd love to see what you guys think about this in the comment section below. We'll have a nice friendly discussion about it, all right? So that's the bad news, kind of, out of the way. Let's talk about some good news. This video I'm playing right here comes from GameSpot.com and it is, of course, gameplay of Astro's Playroom, which is launching with every PS5. There was an embargo for the PS5 yesterday that lifted, so all this news came out about, you know, certain aspects of the PS5 they were allowed to talk about. They were allowed to talk about Astro, they were allowed to talk about the controller. And while I'm showcasing, you know, footage of Astro in the background here, this isn't really what I want to talk about. What I want to talk about is the controller because the DualSense controller sounds really legit after all these previews, like super, super legit. We've had some people saying, you know, there's two next gen consoles coming, but there's only one next gen controller. The DualSense is that good. If you've been following PS5 up to this point, you've probably seen Sony really pushing the DualSense, talking about things like haptic feedback, you know, adaptive triggers, all this kind of stuff. And you might think, well, that's just fancy buzzwords. I'm sure it's not really much of a game changer, but according to the people who now have these in their hands, they're saying, hey, this is legit. You can actually feel like when the character is walking on the sand, for example, it feels different. It's been described as like HD rumble, whereas on the DualShock 4 that we have now, like a part of the controller will vibrate and, you know, the other part will vibrate and that's kind of, that's pretty much it. Whereas now, let me just pull up a controller to give an example. According to what people are saying, you might feel like footsteps, little gentle footsteps just on the bottom part here. You know, it's like really precise, really delicate. Of course, I haven't tried it myself, so I'm just going by what other people have said. However, this has huge implications for, let's say, PSVR 2. When it does come out eventually, uh, what kind of controllers are we gonna be using? You can almost be certain that it's gonna have that technology inside them. And people have been really impressed. That's really added the immersion. And if it's added immersion like that to a flat game, you can probably imagine how much immersion you're gonna guess, like added when you've got your, your eyesight covered by a headset and you feel this in your hands you don't have to suspend your disbelief as much as you would on a flat screen because you're already in the game and this new technology this a new immersive technology that sony's invested in seems like it's really going to enhance that so much and i'm really excited for that the future for psvr 2 looks super bright i think so fingers crossed we will hear about the psvr not too long after the ps5 comes out so really quick Bonus topic that happened while I was in the middle of editing the rest of the video. Shuhei Yoshida tweeted out, Hey, you PSVR owners who've been wanting to get PSVR on the PS5, you want that adapter, this is where you go to get it. He posted the link. The link leads to this image here that I took a screenshot of. I can't get past this screen right now. I think it might be getting hit by a lot of people trying to get on at the same time. But I will put a link to it in the description below so you can hopefully get your hands on the PS4 to PS5 camera adapter, which is what you will need if you want to play your PSVR headset on a PS5. It's a little bit more complicated than it should have been, I think. It's a little bit muddled, but whatever. That's just all I wanted to say about this little quick topic. It's probably gonna be a little bit jarring compared to the rest of the video, but whatever. Let me just resume ending the video now. That is all I wanted to talk about, something bad, something good. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Before I go, 
Let me give a huge thank you to my Patreon supporters whose names are on the screen as I speak. Thanks to their generosity, this channel can stay moist. In particular, let me give a huge shout out to the following. Daniel the Pumpkin Patch Kid, Chop517, Crumb, Pete Hawkins, and Tradition. Thank you very much for that exceptional generosity. I really do appreciate it. If you'd like to help me out too, you can do that over on patreon.com forward slash petrifying pumpkins. link to that will be in the description. But if you don't want to do any of that, you can just like comment share subscribe all that usual youtube shite and that'll be like a huge help too finally let me give a thank you to decepticon for letting me use his music in all of my videos you can find him at decepticon.com link to that will be in the description you can find him spotify bandcamp all the usual places you go for music and with that i will end this video thank you very much for watching until the next time stay moist